what's up, you lot? Welcome back to the challenge with Ellis in the Dens. I'm gonna show you why your beats suck. Now I'm playing, but really, we're showing you how to mix and master your beats like the pros. What about every video now? I always get the same request asking to do a mixing tutorial, so here it is for you lot now. And yeah, as always, Crypto Multi Kit is still out now. One of my best kits yet, don't miss that. And I'm also working on a new drum kit, a new loop kit, which is coming very soon. I'll actually be showing some of the loops from that sample pack in this video. And another special kit, which I'm not going to say yet. But yeah, before we get into the video, if you enjoy learning, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go leave a like and subscribe. And let me know what you guys want down below. Again, I'm trying to hit 10k before the end of this year. And yeah, let's get into it. So as you can see here, as always, we're in FL Studio, and this is a sample that I'm going to be making a beat to today. Let's get right into it. Starting off, I'm going to go with a simple room right here. So yeah, straight away as well with the master, we'll simply just put a soft clipper on. I can see like straight away as well with the velocity right here down here. I always bring this to the top with like most of my drum sounds, especially the hi-hats because when I'm doing rolls and stuff, sometimes the velocity just like it just gets a bit annoying. So when it's all the way at the top, it's just simple. I always tend to like keep it two-step and then I change it after I've done all the drums. Sounds like this. As you can hear, there's a lot of space like in these little gaps. I'm gonna fill these in with this uh, Fogo 808 from my drum kit. But obviously, I don't want the 808s to interact, so I'm just gonna cut it off. Yeah, that's hard. But now at this point, I'm gonna add some hi-hats or like some rolls sort of thing. And I'm gonna like make this go down like this. video i wouldn't really add a kick to this but i'm gonna add it so i can show you how to properly mix these sounds kind of slapping though for instance like if the kick isn't hitting like right here when the 808 goes up fix that literally all you need to do is just put the velocity up if you really want this to sound like it's hitting on every single note you can go that extra step and duplicate the kick and make it hit on that note all you have to do is just reverse the polarity right here if you don't know already reversing the polarity on the kicks or the 808s literally change the bounce so much so like if i have it reversed if i don't have it reversed that's it better, you know what I'm saying? Like, reverse the parry is pretty much the parry of the waveform. If I'm right, it's so muddy because both the waveforms are in, like, the same position, if you know what I'm saying. So if you mirror that, then it will sound better. And sometimes, as well, if the kicks aren't hitting, something that I've seen recently, like, even when I've been in the studio, is they would pitch it down. They would actually change the pitch to the kick. That's pretty much the beat right there. Now let's get to the part which you've all been waiting for, which is obviously the mixing process. So when I mix my beats, literally, I'll show you right now how simple this is. Because I've seen a lot of you overcomplicated that have all these different effects on the sounds. If you have good sound selection, you don't need all these different effects. Let's say for example, ATL Jacob, he had a video of Producer Grind where he broke down a future song, which I actually have in my playlist, and it's a hard song. And he literally showed the master. You don't put none on the master, you just tweak it a little bit to make it sound good. He didn't have nothing on the master, not even a soft clip, but he had nothing on the master. Whether the engineer puts a master, like anything on the master, soft clip or anything, Thing, it's not your issue. Most I'd really do, depending on like what genre it is, I put an EQ on and maybe change some frequencies. Because when you're EQing the master, what you're doing is you're just EQing all of the sounds. So if your sounds don't sound good in the first place, you don't have a drum kit. Some people use Fruity Limiter on the master. Obviously, it's pound on, but if you do it right, it can sound good. I've seen a lot of drill producers use Fruity Limiter on the master, which actually can make your kicks hit better. Most all of my beats, literally, this is my master. Literally, just a soft clipper. That's it. it just makes these drum sound now. So. I'm gonna start off with the snare. I like to have the snare to hit around 0 dB. Depending on what sound you have, it can be different depending on the frequency range because higher frequencies appear louder in R ears because we can't hear all low frequencies like past 20 hertz, I think it is. So high frequencies in R ears sound louder than low frequencies. If you have a snare or a clap or something which is more in the high frequencies, then it wouldn't hit on 0 dB. Everything on what I'm saying does differ on your sound selection because I like my stuff to be loud. Like with my samples, I like my sound to be at like minus 9 dB. As you can hear, it's got those high frequencies, so I'm gonna break down. Right here. Hi hats. And always like to pan them here, like to the left and to the right. Like, a lot of the time, my hi hats as well, I like to have them at about minus 3 dB, depending on what it is as well. It really differs where you have it. So for this, I'm going to have it right. Minus 6. And then snare as well. Yeah, so it sounds good. So that sounds good. Open that to like to have more pans to the right. 
Oh, that sounds good. A little bit of sauce as well. If you've got like a mini cube or something, this is when you're mixing samples or beats as well. I'd recommend this one thing. As you can see, like they, they normally have like knobs, like little mixing knobs. What you can do is you can get the drum sounds like so, and then you can right click this and you click link to controller and you link that to one of these knobs, which literally you just move the knob. And then you can do this, which kind of changes the volume. So a lot of the time, if I really want to mix my ear, just put it onto a knob and then just like sort of like look away and then just do it to what my ear feels sounds good. As for the airway, obviously with the spins, it's got a hit, so. As well, kick sometimes even have to get harder. The parries are pretty mirrored. Sometimes I have my kick at like just over zero, sometimes I have it lower, and for this one, I have it blur because it's already hit. Just to prove a point, my mixer, none of these have anything on the mix. So if that doesn't prove anything, then I don't know what does. Literally, all you have to do is just know your frequency range and pan the sounds so they're not all in the middle. So if they're all in the middle, then it won't really have much space for the artist to rap on. When I arrange beats like this, I kind of like to start it so the beat kind of comes in. So as soon as like that artist hears the beat, within like the first five, 10 seconds, if it doesn't sound their vibe, they will just click off it. So to prevent this, you could do something like this, make it play. Yeah, this is a little optional thing, which is quite nice to pick up. And it goes in. When I'm arranging it, what I'd do is I'd have the intro. Normally a 16 bar chorus and a 32 bar verse, or really it'd be like more or less a 16 bar verse and an eight bar bridge. Depending on the BPM, if it's a very quick beat, then you might want to have like another eight bars for your verse. Then most of the time, depending on the BPM, it will be around three minutes, three to four minutes. As you can see with this, it's 126 BPM, so it'll last a bit longer. So sometimes you might not even need the bridge and just have the 16 bar verse. So yeah, a bit of a different one today. If you guys enjoyed learning, if you put the video, be sure to go leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you guys want down below. As again, this is literally from your suggestions. Crypt Mode Kit is still out now. First thing's coming will probably be my new sample pack, which will have like 30 or so samples, crazy stuff, literally what I've been doing while I'm not on camera. I'll see you lot in the next one. Peace.